Hey everybody, well, for another Facebook Live, okay, on this lovely, what is today, November 3rd? Don't forget to get out and vote, okay? Anyway, today we are very fortunate from the lovely state of California, from the Yerba Linda office, we have Sherry Farsani. Sherry, welcome. Yeah. And I should probably say also real estate extraordinaire as well, yes. <laughs> Good morning, Greg. Good morning. How are you doing today? How's everything over there in lovely California? Fantastic. I'm doing great. I mean, the lovely weather of California is getting cooler, but thank God it's sunny. And uh, the market, even though with all the things happening, is I'm doing good and I'm happy to be an agent. Well, that's right, because you did great last year, too. You're in top 25, which is we have a lot of agents in California, so that's awesome. And congratulations there. And then I hear you're, in the, you're probably going to carry home some hardware this year too so tell us how you're doing so well in this market well um uh, based on what's happening in the market there are ups and downs but the good part is uh i learned how to move with the market and how to bring the buyer and the sellers into the understanding what where the market is heading and get them prepared because it's good for them to know and get them knowledgeable and one thing that i learned um getting a lot of information and I'm getting myself knowledgeable in loans and what the rates are because right now the interest for the people is they want to know what the, where they are heading what the rate will be and that's why if you're getting more knowledgeable in that asking the, the questions that you need from your lender and bring it to the buyer and the seller and bring them to the table to meet together because there are ways that you can help the buyer and there are ways you can help the seller to sell their property if they are really wanting to sell, not just mm -hmm. testing the market. Right. So in that area, I'm very happy. <clears throat> awesome, awesome. And you were just telling me a story where you got, where you got the seller to, do, to uh, help out and buy the rate down two whole points. So what, from, from yeah. like seven and a quarter to like, what, five and a quarter, right? Or something like that. Yes. And it's, it's actually good because the area, not the buyer and the seller, they don't really know about the buy down. When you bring it to them, the seller, like I, I had an open house. It, I have a funny story that mm -hmm. I had a, a two buyers, they came in with their agent. I don't want to say which uh, brokerage, but they You're came happy. in. I, I can tell you later, but they came <laughs> in and I, I talked to them and the, the agent was there and I told them, do you have your pre-approval? And I, I got into the conversation and I asked them, uh, do you know about buy down? And both of the buyers, like their eyes lit up and they said, what is buy down? And the agent was there and I explained to them what the buy down was on the point. And they said, they looked at each other and they looked at the agent and they said, did you know that? And the agent said, no, can you tell me too? So it, I mean, and the buyer was there. And as soon as I explained to them, the buyer said, can I have your card and the flyer? And she went and grabbed the card and she grabbed the flyer because she, I mean, I felt bad for the agent. You know, right. so getting knowledgeable, being able to bring that knowledge to the buyer, it opens up the door for you uh, to let them know, you know, you know what you're talking about. You can help them uh, yeah. to get the deal and get it in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have a little uh, affirmation that I do called being confident, competent and natural. And when you act like that, people want to work with you. And that's what you're you're describing when you have the answers like. You know, okay, so look, California, about a third of it's cash. Those are easy, right? Because you have, they have their pick of the home right now and they can get a deal on it and they can get their home inspection, repair things done. And so it's easy dealing with, but even when you're dealing with people that are getting a loan, you can still buy that rate down to a really attractive rate in the fives, okay, or right at five if you're paying attention, which is great. I just, I just wrote an offer for a client of mine and I, when I told them about buy down, they didn't know. So I got the phone number from for the lender, which they already had the pre-approval. I called the lender. I said, I just want to know if you guys are into the program of buying down. And they said, uh, yes, we are. But the bad part was when they were getting the pre-approval, the lender never brought it up to the buyer, let them know about there is such a program does exist. Mm 
So when I told the buyer and I told the lender, I kind of, I kind of put them back together to and the seller. So these are the steps that if you get yourself ready, then you are open to actually client will follow you. You don't need to go after them because they know they have an agent that knows what's happening in the market. Right. Yeah. You, you got to have the answers and you got to know what you're talking about because, I mean, look, at you have a fiduciary responsibility to help your clients. So hopefully uh, you know what's going on. Like, like you just said, with the interest rates going up, the market itself, how is the market where you are in your Belinda? Uh, be honest with you, there are a lot of buyers. Like last weekend, I had 25 groups came in in two days. And I can say 90% of them were good qualified buyer. They were, they wanted it to buy. So the market is shifting. I can see that. And there are more homes coming into the market. And the, the area that I'm watching is the sellers are not as aggressive as they were before in a sense of when you're putting an offer. They're understanding the, sh the market is shifting. They're understanding that if they want to sell, they have to respond to the buyer not to ignore it and come to the table and do a given a counter before they wouldn't even counter they mm. would just pick up a buyer but now they're coming into the table and they are countering and that's the area that i see the market is shifting and believe me in this area is still hot and yeah. i'm still seeing changes happening yeah 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 you know six months ago nine months ago especially you know you would just wait for 14 offers to come in and pick the one highest over asking it was uh, a pretty simple trend i mean especially for the sellers but they got kind of used to that now yes. i mean look in southern california you still have an inventory situation in most of the country we still have an inventory yes. situation just where you guys are it's even uh it's even tighter so uh these buyers that didn't get a house six months ago i mean if they all come out now now is the time for them to wrap something up because you can definitely get the house you want now. You know, I, I read an interesting stat, Sherry. Um, 60 something, I think it's 62, 63% of buyers that bought during COVID, like from April 2020 to the end of, you know, uh, 2021, all of uh, 60 something percent of them said, I don't think I got what I want. I felt rushed. You know, I compromised. So these yeah. people that are out there looking now, yeah, if you're going to get a mortgage, you got to do some gymnastics, which is available for the rate, but you can definitely yeah. get the house you want and the sellers are easier to work with right now. Yeah. But one thing that um, I'm actually looking in the market is that uh, when a buyer comes and they talk to me and say, oh, the market is crashing, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. And I said, no, the market is not crashing. Market is normalizing. From what it was, it was not normal. Now we're coming back to the pricing on the pre-pandemic. The pricing is still good. It's not dropping and it's not crashing. So that's something that I explained to them. I said, if you're sitting, the market crashes by end of the year for you to get the house you want, you're going to lose that house because there's no way that it's going to crash because if the prices are coming down is because before was not normal. So mm. these are the areas that I see that is happening. Yes, the houses are selling, the prices are coming down, but not crashing. They're becoming normal prices for the area and the square footage and the built of the year, the house was built and all other things that are included in the house, the prices are coming to a normal uh, price. And that's something that I let the buyers and seller know. So the seller do not, as before, they are not in complete uh, ruling of what they want and what they're going to get. No, you have to go back to what the market is, what the buyers are talking about too. So coming and meeting at the same time together and trying to close the deal. Yeah. Yeah, they're not selling for way over what they're worth like they were a few months ago. Now they're selling for really what the property is worth. It doesn't have that crazy situation. But, you know, I mean, we still have an inventory situation, so they're going to keep moving. The question is, uh, when do you want to wait? You know, what's going to happen is uh, we'll have all these people on the sidelines because the rates are up and people are going to wait. But it really is an opportunity. It's kind of like an eye of a storm if you look at it that way. It's an opportunity to go out and get the house you want because as soon as these rates start to adjust again, uh, you know, we got an election next Tuesday, or hopefully you got out and voted early. I always do the early because it's easier. 
Right. Go out and vote early. And, um, you know, uh, after next week, we could have some changes. Some things could change. So it's very, you know, yeah. you know, knock on wood. Uh, they can't go much higher. They could go a little higher. Right. But um, they're not. And, and, you know, and I know you've been doing this for a while like me. I mean, and I know people hate to hear this today, but historically, these are still pretty good rates. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's not high. Believe me. Uh, when some of the older buyer come and they talk to me, they say, oh, no, seven, seven and a quarter is nothing. I paid 18 percent when right. I bought my first home. So right. to them, it still uh, is low. And right. believe me, uh, if you see a house, I tell the buyer that you really want, don't pass on it because there's always chance to refinance. <coughs> right. There are other programs that you can get and talk to your lender to be able to get the house you want versus losing it just because the rate are one or two point higher than what you expected. But you can refinance always uh, and don't lose the chance uh, on the house that you like. Yeah. Yep. You know, as the saying goes, marry the house, date the rate. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, I love that one. I heard that from Prosperity. I love that. That's a great way to put it. All right. So, yes. uh, you know, and look at, um, I even saw Dave Ramsey, Mr. Live Below Your Means and Work Your Credit, and which I, believe me, I, I agree with some of that stuff for sure. Uh, but he's also yes. saying, buy the house because of the inventory situation we just talked about. He still says that right now, if you're going to buy a house in the next five years, right now is still the best time because, you know, we have more people that can buy homes than homes in this country, especially in California. I believe, what is it, like 20% of the country lives in California. There's 50 states, <laughs> but 20% of the people live in California. You guys get a lot of people in California. Yes. Yes. Okay, so that's kind of the buyer situation, Sherry. So tell us a little about sellers. So you're working with sellers today. What are you telling yes. them because of this changed market? Sellers right now, I, the one that I'm talking to, they want to put their house. Some of them are in the market, but their concern is, am I going to be able to find what I want? And uh, that's the question mostly that I get from them. And also their, their concern is as well for the rate because they want to sell and they want to buy and they're looking at the rate. The house that they're selling is two and a half to three percent as far as the rate is. Now they're looking at their buying, it's about seven percent, seven and a quarter. So again, I bring them the buy down rate for them to do, but at the same time, they some of them are holding back. Some of right. them are holding back because their concern is not being able to find what they want. Uh, and some of them, unfortunately, you know, they're saying that, no, I'm going to live in it and I'm no matter what, but there, it, there's a, for me, there's been a, a point that I'm trying to still to bring the sellers that they are buying, they are selling, they want to sell, but they want to wait till the January to see what happens for them. And right now, <coughs> what I'm doing with them, actually the buyers that I have, I take the buyer to them, let them meet the buyer that they are buyer to their property and bring them to the table that way to uh, for them to list their property and sell it. So that area, I'm still uh, working to get the sellers to come in and uh, they're, they're still more hesitant to put in the market. That's why there is less home in the market uh, as we're expected to have. Right. Yeah. So what you're saying is um, pe there are still people out there that um, can't find what they're looking for. Their house yes. is at a great rate of like 2.9, 2.75, three and a quarter, right? The interest rate they're paying on it. And they're looking at downsizing. But because of the rate change, it makes the payment not that much more attractive, but if they're paying cash, obviously that doesn't matter. But, um, but yeah, I, you know, you guys, that's what I'm and saying. What's they that? put their house on contingency in uh, finding the, another property. So that kind of slows down for them to selling the property when the buyer has, and they want to, I, I had a house that I put it in a contingency for them to finding a replacement property. And we got an offer, but the seller says, I'm not going to rent back. I'm going to sit in here till I find the property. So that was the area that the buyer and seller were not agreeing because the buyer wanted it to close the deal 
and rent back, get a rent back from the seller. So these are the areas that uh, right now sellers are having issue with selling it sooner or putting it in a market till they find something. I got you. I yeah. had a buyer that came in to me that says I have to sell my property. Right now I'm talking to him to put his mar house in the market because he found a house that he likes. I said, I'm not gonna be able to write the offer for you till you actually list your property. So we can show you have listed your property that now you wanna buy this one. So I'm working in that one because he found the property. So he's rushing to put his property in the market. Yeah, well, it goes back to what you said when we started the call. If you know what you're doing, right? You have way more value in this market because this market requires an agent who's experienced, who knows what they're doing, yes. who knows the ins and outs, can do contingent offers, can negotiate a home yes. inspection, can get stuff, right? And even a buy down. Like, like you said, the agent yes. that came in had no idea what that even was, but you negotiated for your buyers a 2% yes. buy down, okay, seller funded in your offer, which is great. That's what you want to do yes. today. If I was buying a primary residence today, I'd be I'd be out there because it's a great time. I can get the house I want. The rate is something I can always work on later or buy it down or both. Right? You can do a two to one buy down and refinance in 12, 18, whatever, 24 months and still uh, still do fine. So there's a lot of great deals out there. You just have to really be paying attention and know what you're doing. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And one thing that I honestly, I tell a lot of the agents that I talk to, I actually uh, brought two more agents to the office that they sign up and I'm working with them is get yourself knowledgeable. You're not just an agent to show homes. You're an agent. You got to learn what you are doing and being able to give the right information, especially in this every, in every year, if we look at it, there are areas that we have to get knowledgeable in that area right. right now this year we need to get knowledgeable in about rates about loans about uh, how we can help them to get a better rate so these are the areas i always tell the agent get yourself knowledgeable yeah study yeah. work you know learn educate it's all good stuff for you and uh you know and then this market will be really good to you you know what what you're describing is did you see Alan Dalton do the forever agent thing? That's what it sounds like you're. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I loved it. Oh my God. I got so excited and I, so much information. It, he's, he's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. Yeah. I, yeah, I listen to him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. But, you know, but look at I have a question. When you're a doctor, you have a continuing education to go. Right. Because you need to get updated on what's happening in medical field. The reason I bring this part, because I work in medical field for 30 years. So they have to get educated and they go con constantly continuing education. The same thing with agents. Right. We need to go to continuing education, get educated, go to the people that they can give us the right information to educate us to the right way to be able to give that. The more educated you get, the more knowledgeable you get the easier it gets for you. And the more value you have as their agent. Yes. Right? They follow you. When you have that knowledge, they'll follow you. That's right. And they'll tell all their friends and then you'll have repeat and referral business from it. And let's face it, for, because of your fiduciary responsibility, it's just the right thing to do. Yes. Yes. Right. Like, like you said. One, one right. thing I want to only also tell some of the agents is before, and it's still the, I, you see a buyer comes, and says, oh, you know what? Uh, I want to let uh, listing agent. I, I'm just going to have my list, the listing agent write my offer. I don't, they don't want to have a buyer's agent. I had one client that worked fantastic. It was, she came to me, she saw my open house. She, I wasn't the listing agent. She said that I want the listing agent to write the offer. I said, why? She says, well, um, I think I have better chances of listing agent. I, what I told her, I said, there's always better when you have two knowledgeable agents negotiating and you have the right to have one agent just protecting you and your right. Right. You get your agent, listing agent, and let them negotiate and get you the best house you want. So don't be afraid if a buyer says, oh, I want to go with the listing agent. There are ways to show them and talk to them to help them to understand why it's important and it's good to have two agents, but get knowledgeable to be able to negotiate for them. 
Yeah. Get knowledgeable, stay knowledgeable, and keep, like you said, continuing education too, because then they'll tell all their friends, and it's just the right thing right. to do. And you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a big responsibility to know what you're doing in real estate because you're helping people with their most important, most valuable asset, and it costs them, or you can say cost or save them several thousand dollars based on what you tell them, and uh, you know the advice you give them, which kind of important. Yeah, but honestly, I got to hand it to you, Berkshire Hathaway all the uh, people that they're working there because I'm learning from you, from Alan Dalton, from Larry, from the meetings we have every Tuesday with Larry, honest to God. Yeah. It is, there's so much information. There's so much information that I always, always pay attention. And I try to use them and that's really helpful. Yeah. And thank you guys. Larry is really, I, I love Alan and I appreciate that too, Sherry. Thank you very much. And Larry is really good at your hypo logo stuff, like jobs, all the different things going on, and, and the numbers, the percentages, what the yes, appreciation. I know, I know. I've been to your meetings; they're really, really good. Yes. All right, I'm Sherry. Fine. Any final words you want to leave these lovely people out in Facebook land? Well, my point is get active, set up open houses. Open houses are the best way for them to get at least, especially for new agents. Don't be afraid. And and one other thing I tell all the agents, think out of the box. Get yep. out of your comfort zone. Do something different each time. And you'll be surprised because if we don't want to, you know, widen up our views, is we're just going to do one thing. It's not good. Get out of your comfort zone. Do something different. Get knowledgeable. Life begins outside your comfort zone. Not a lot of people understand that, but I agree with you. It really does. All right, Sherry Farsani, thank you very much for taking your time out today. This is incredibly awesome. You are a rock star, and I'll see you soon. Thank Bye, you everybody. So much. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.